All right, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, then welcome. Um, today, as you can tell by the title, uh, this is going to be a sort of a complete beginner's guide on how to get into Roblox GFX design. So hopefully today I can cover all the basics. I could also get you guys started into doing some actual work and practicing. So let's get right into it. Right now, let's start off with some examples of what Roblox GFX is and what the purpose of it really is. So here is a popular artist, uh, Rightless. You can, you can go ahead and follow him, but let's look at some examples of his work. So you can see right here, thumbnail for slashing simulator. And as you can see, this is Roblox artwork, effects in the background, the lighting, the painting on the character rework the post edit for supergirls atlantis map so as you can see this is a thumbnail for yet another game right here here is an icon for blocks fruits another very popular game so uh if we take a look at the roblox homepage, you can see every single one of these icons here is considered a roblox quote unquote roblox gfx right these are called game icons all right youtube so before this video starts just a little message for you guys uh don't forget to check out our store as you can see here we have free ui templates and uh and also graphics packs you could use to learn from and feel free to use the ui in your game uh we have paid products here as well uh we don't have too many products right now in the future the plan is to have hundreds and even thousands of products you could purchase and shop from and that also means a ton more free stuff if you could do us a favor just check out our store right now and also as far as videos and the youtube goes since i'm going to be uploading daily you can expect a large variety of content uh tutorials and a ton of you know other stuff so if today's video does not really interest you just stay tuned for the next one and uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Uh, make sure you leave a like, join our Discord, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So obviously a well-made game icon will attract users and will make people want to click on the game, which in turn can help you uh, get more players. So examples of some good icons. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool icon right here. Uh, Anime Fighters is a nice icon as well. Brokehaven is an interesting icon. You have Blocks Roots here. So you can see how game icons um, are important to a game. And this right here is called a thumbnail. So uh, obviously these images are displayed here. They kind of give the game some branding. It's cool images to show, you know, maybe some of the models or abilities in the game. So this could also encourage people to play your game that is basically what roblox gfx is uh, we could go ahead and check out some more some different artists so you can get a feel of uh, some different styles so right here we have soft gb let's go into media and uh, you see his thumbnail here for amzak's coastal hotel and resort game uh, you can see the water the branding in the background just a very uh, pleasing to the eye thumbnail before I get more into detail this is what you would call a render so this is a 3d render where the models and objects are taken into a 3d software and they are rendered out and then you could also add some post effects and edit in an image editing software like Photoshop or you know some other ones uh, here's a couple more right here this one is great. The colors, the angle, the scene, the composition, the sky, it's all, it's all very smooth. So uh, yeah, that's just some examples of Roblox GFX. Now I want to dive into what exactly you need to do to start. Some basic questions you might have is, can you make money from GFX? And the answer is, obviously. If you take a look at SoftGB, here is his commission sheet. So he charges 30,000 Robux for a thumbnail and the equivalent is 105 US dollars, 15k for an icon and 53 dollars in uh, USD. So obviously I don't know exactly how many commissions he has but if you just take a look at his timeline so 30k for thumbnails, half uh, 15k for icons, 15k for this icon, this was just one day ago, 30k for this 
thumbnail uh, five days ago another 30k for this thumbnail and uh, two days before is 30k for this thumbnail right here so obviously i don't know the exact numbers <laughs> that he's making but you can clearly see that you can make a very good amount of money doing robots graphics and of course this is a valuable skill in the future you don't have to do commissions um, sometimes let's say a game uh, developer will offer you an opportunity um, to be a long-term developer on their game uh, that could also be a possibility but yeah when you first get started i would say for the first couple months i would avoid doing commissions because obviously if you're just starting out you need to work on your skill and you need some quality practice and uh, just starting commissions way too early it will put unnecessary pressure on you and in turn your work will hinder your progress will hinder and uh, stagnate and that's not what you want because once that happens your work quality will decrease and in turn you will get no commissions so all right now i want to show you guys some of my oldest work so i'm on my very old deviant art right here and you can see this is my first post published may 26 2014 so this was over almost eight years ago uh so as you can see i don't believe this character was a render. I believe I just screenshotted it. I took a Google image as a background and I just placed the character onto the image. Uh, there's not even a shadow here, so you can tell I was just starting out, but here is the second one. Also a screenshot, you can tell the edges are very jagged and are not smooth. Um, here's the next one. This one is a bit more interesting. Sorry, I didn't started adding some effects here but uh yeah you can see these are some of my first works from years ago you can see that i have been doing it for quite a while it's taken time uh obviously during this time i was very young granted um if i had started maybe two years ago i would have achieved the same progress in two years than i did here in eight years because obviously as a kid you know your progress is not the most optimal or efficient progress you're just kind of learning as you go and having fun so the question you are wondering now is how exactly can you get started now i'm pretty sure you guys are eager to get your you know feet wet so how can you get started okay first of all let's go through some softwares a free editing software you can use is photopea.com which is pretty much like a downgraded version of photoshop if you you know don't have photoshop um so this is photo pm it is completely for free you don't have to download anything but ideally you want to uh get photoshop so you're gonna have to pay for it if you get it by other means uh, i'm not encouraging you to do so so those are the image editing softwares now for 3d software the most popular ones that people are using right now are blender which is completely free uh, this is what I'm using currently and also Cinema 4D. Uh, Cinema 4D is a paid software so you're going to have to buy this one as well. Obviously I will recommend Blender because it is completely free. So you can go ahead and download Blender and uh, just stick to Photopea if you don't have Photoshop. And that is how you can start right away. Now I'm just going to head into Roblox Studio here and I'm going to show you guys some very simple ways you can start without rendering just yet so let's uh let's see what we got okay i'm going to spawn this car model i'm gonna remove that little spawn point now you can see here is a little car model right now since we are not going to do any rendering just yet what we could do to make an image out of this is uh, let's try to find a background scene where we can make a very interesting uh, graphic with this. So if we go to, I want to say, is it, if there's a racetrack, that'd be cool. Put this car somewhere or a street. Okay, so we have this thing. <laughs> um, let's position the car. I'm gonna place it right here on the driveway, actually. It's really cool. Okay, so this could I guess be a decent scene. However, I would like to scoop this up. 
duplicate this. All right, so you can see we have a little scene set up. Uh, you can adjust the lighting. So we can change the skybox right here. And this will adjust our lighting accordingly. So I don't like that one. Old Roblox, realistic lighting. All right, so I think this is fine right here. It is in terms of the lighting. Uh, you can change the time of day too, obviously. All right, I'm just going to grab a screenshot of uh, this car. Pick the best angle I possibly can. As you can see, I'm just going to take a screenshot. Now, for the sake of this video uh, being the basics, I'm just going to use Photopea. Even though I would much rather not because it is slow on the browser. So we're going to hit new projects. For the dimensions, you're going to go for 1920 by 1080 anytime you're making a thumbnail. Okay, we got to change it again. So that is the size you want whenever you're making thumbnails for Roblox. Uh, background doesn't matter. DPI, keep it at 100. And that's what I use. And uh, now you can hit create. And since I took a screenshot on my clipboard, if I go to edit, I can hit paste. And my screenshot will appear here. And now if you take a look at your right side, here is your layers panel. So in just about any you know development software, graphics, you have layers. And how layers work is if you see this eye icon, Next to your layers, you could use this to hide your layers. Here is our background layer. And anytime you see this checkered pattern, this means it is transparent. Whenever something is transparent, it basically has no background. So if I export this right here, it will basically have nothing. So let's turn our layer back on. And now I'm just going to go over some uh, basic steps, some basic buttons. If you go down here, this is the trash delete icon if you hit this your layer will disappear and to undo let's go to edit and hit undo the shortcut is Control z um, i believe it is the most common shortcut for undoing and just basically most software universally it will be Control z to undo unless you change it obviously and next to the uh, delete button you will have your new layer button this is a very important button. Next, we have new folder, a group, which will be very useful in organizing. Uh, here we have here we have a mask, which we will get into in the future. Here we have adjustment layers. As you can see, I'm gonna show you guys what some of these do uh, in just a little bit. Here we have layer styles, and here we just have link layers. So now let's try some very simple things we can do to the scene to make it look a bit better and just kind of experiment. So these are your adjustment layers. Uh, we can start with some vibrance. So if we click that, we increase the vibrance and the saturation. You can see the colors are increased. And obviously if you turn down, you will have a black and white look, as you can see. Let's turn the saturation up because I like how this looks. And uh, if you hide this, you can see the before and after with the vibrance effects. Let's try some more uh we can go for photo filter the density just basically affects how strong uh the effect is really so if you click here you can change the color of your photo filter we can go for a blue hue we can hit ok you can see how that affects our image uh, you can turn off preserve luminosity and this will happen um so you like this no, I don't like how this looks, but I'm just doing this as an example. Um, okay, right here we have blend modes. This may seem complicated at first, but as we keep going, you will see how each of these work. So right now I'm just going to click on a random one. We go for soft lights and you will see this affects our image in a certain way. If we go to screen, it will also affect our image in a certain way. We're going to multiply and you can see how things change accordingly so we could lower this to 15 percent opacity opacity refers to how transparent uh, or how visible a layer is so max opacity it will be completely visible and uh, obviously you can lower it down you can lower it down by just dragging on the name or just going to input your own percents 
number. Now let's go ahead and try some more effects here. Uh, if we go to color lookup, uh, there's some looks here. Okay, there is a bunch. Let's try this one, see how this looks. <laughs> I don't like it, but uh, let's go for faded. Let's see how this looks. Right, you see Pasadena. Let's go for Milo. I'm curious to see how this looks. This one's actually not terrible, I like this. Um, Alright, uh, let's use this. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys some basic depth of field. Uh, this will improve this image a lot with just a basic blur. So, let's start off by copying this layer. So, right click, go to duplicate layer. Okay, let's go up to filter, let's go for blur, and let's hit Gaussian blur. Alright, and just adjust your radius. So maybe let's go for 2.5. That should be enough. I'm gonna hit OK. And now as you can see, our entire image is blurry. Now, how we're gonna fix that is you want to go to your erasure tool, which is this tool right here. Um, we're going to click here to increase our size drastically. Let's turn our hardness all the way down. I'm gonna show you guys what hardness does. Now we have full hardness, we also have full opacity and flow. Uh, you can see it's a very sharp cut. You can see the edges of the eraser, which is not what we want. So you want to lower your hardness all the way down for this uh, effects we're doing. And also I would recommend to lower your opacity and flow also a little bit. And now we can begin erasing. So now we are erasing the blur on the car, which is the part where we don't want to be blurred. I'm just gonna turn this all the way up so I can get this done a little quicker, but it will be less accurate. Now, now to zoom in, you can hit Control plus the plus icon on your keyboard. This will this will be a very useful shortcut for you to uh, zoom in, and also use the minus icon with Control to zoom out. So now as you can see, we have a very nice blur on our image. And if we take a look at the before and after, I'm going to click on this layer and I'm gonna hold shift. If I click on the top, this will select everything. And now what I could do is I can hit the folder icon. And now um, this will basically group all those into one folder. And if I turn it off, you can see this is the image we start off with. And if I turn it back on, this is our edit so uh yeah this is the beginner's very basic uh, guide into robots gfx to recap first i explained to you what it is and then i showed you some examples i explained how you can make money off of commissions and then we went into how to actually get started what software you need next and then we went into robot studio i just grabbed a quick screenshot of some models of uh, some models here and we brought them into photopia which is a free software to show you guys the very basics uh to get you warmed up that's going to do it for this video uh if this helps you make sure to drop a like if you guys can check out our store the link is right on the screen and also down in the description below i would highly highly appreciate that and as well as joining our discord the community uh, where you can talk to like-minded people that will also be fantastic so with that being said if you want more drop a like a comment and i will make part two uh, i hope this video helps you guys and i look forward to seeing you guys again until next time take care